Hi there, it's Z here. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can use um, something called modern portfolio theory and combine it with Monte Carlo simulations to estimate the best um, set of portfolio weights for a given um, number of stocks that you've chosen. So um, for those of you who've seen the earlier article I published this month, I basically talked about the topic of Monte Carlo simulations and how you can combine that with something called geometric Brownian motion or bootstrap sampling to essentially forecast future values where this dark blue line are actual prices and this blue line is sort of a random permutations of uh, future outcomes. And uh, if you aggregate it using a Monte Carlo simulation of uh, hundreds and hundreds of runs, you can eventually get to a uh, 50th, 90th, and 10th percentile. And uh, it gives you a bit of a sense of uh, a range of possible outcomes. And what we're going to do um, is we're going to extend that idea and look at how we can use Monte Carlo simulations again to determine the best set of weights for a portfolio to optimize your risk reward. So um, this is all implemented in a web app that I built uh, that is at www.stonksforecast.online where um, it's the last two options that are uh, in this particular uh, web app. So um, basic idea is if you have lots of different portfolios and each portfolio has a different weightage for a given set of stocks and you start trying to plot the returns against the standard deviation, you end up with a chart that kind of looks like this, where uh, each dot represents a particular portfolio and that portfolio has a uh, certain standard deviation of returns and a certain expected uh, return, me meaning like a, a mean or an average. Um, and if you've got all these dots plotted out for a very large number of different weights, you'll eventually find one that uh, has the best possible capital allocation. And uh, the so it's not just picking the one that has the highest returns because it will probably also have high risk, but it's about finding the one that uh, hits that sweet spot where you get the best uh, reward for the risk that you're taking. So um, I've written an article um, in Medium that goes into a lot more of the theoretical details, um, including some of the metrics uh, that people use to measure this called sharp ratios and another metric called Sortino ratios. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to sort of show you what it looks like. So um, in the app, if you were to click in uh, historical returns and here I've chosen some automotive stocks so that's uh, explaining the picture that you saw a moment ago and I've selected a risk-free rate from a particular website uh, where for the US I'm just going to say it's 0.93 so I've put that here if I click show simulations uh, you get a chart that kind of looks like this so uh, not exactly um, the same as what you saw a moment ago, but close enough. So this is the historical uh, returns for all the different individual component stocks. And you can see that uh, this line that sort of uh, isn't really very clear yet because I've only had 500 iterations run, but uh, this line represents the efficient um, frontier of the different portfolios of stocks and uh, the optimal ratio uh, according to this would be uh, the bulk of the stocks should be invested in Tesla with uh, another chunk in Ferrari uh, race so that's what it says here and uh, the neat thing is uh, if you want to not go beyond just looking at historical and you want to look at the future, you can also do that in the app where here uh, you're not looking at historical information, you're looking at forecasting future. So uh, we're going to try and say what does the uh, returns look like one year ahead. So uh, a year ahead from December 2020 to um, December 2021. 
and we're going to run uh, 500 iterations, different weights. I'm going to click this and you can see you get similar kind of shape. It's not exactly there because uh, the it's got 500 different weights, but I've limited it to 10 iterations for each weight. So essentially you can think of it as a loop within a loop where you're running uh, one particular uh, portfolio weight but you are iterating over the same set of weights 10 times and getting the p50 so this is what this chart is showing so uh, if i were to increase this 10 iterations to probably 100 iterations and this to a thousand you end up with a slightly smoother looking chart uh, but the problem is if you do it on the web app you might get a timeout because uh, it is very computationally intensive so i built a uh, python notebook instead where you can see the same thing, where uh, this is the uh, thousand different weights, um, but hundred iterations. And you can see it took a whopping 30 minutes to run this, but you sort of get uh, the expected shape. So um, the article has a lot more detail. Uh, do have a look through, um, by all means, play around with the app um, and let me know what you think. And uh, the, Article covers a bit of a code walkthrough, some of the theory, uh, and if you like it, uh, let me know. Uh, drop me a comment in uh, Medium itself or uh, feedback in the, the app itself, which also has a feedback form. So uh, I guess that's it from me. Uh, thanks. Bye-bye.